All right, we're going to finish our book and find out who, or if anyone actually wins, Escape from Mr. Lomicello's library. Chapter 53. Back in the art and artifacts room, Kyle felt confident they were pretty close to figuring out, well, whatever it was they were supposed to figure out. How it would help them escape from the library was still anybody's guess. It's 1044, said Akimi. The last clue should pop up on the Wonder Dome in 16 minutes. Okay, you guys, said Kyle, spread out. We need a rhyme for Andy. This model of the bank building is n came in handy, added Miguel. The dandy bandits, shouted Akimi, once again setting the display hats. Yes, said Haley, pulling off her shoes so she could show everybody her clue card. At the bandits there. Bandits, I found this in the 300s room. That's the clue we're waiting for, said Kyle, because the Dewey Decimal number for true crime book books always start with the number three, added Miguel. When we find that book, it'll tell us how and where the bandits crawled in in 1968. Listen to this, you guys, said Akimi. She read a placard in the display case. The plaid fedora from 1968 was worn by bank robber Leopold Loblolly, one of the notorious dandy bandits. Loblolly, shouted Miguel. The smell of vision clue, said Kyle. That's why everything kept smelling like pine trees. Loblolly was one of the pine trees in the answer Mr. Limoncello gave you guys, said Haley. Whoop, 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 said Mr. Limoncello. As banana shoes squeaking, he stepped into the room. Well done, Miss Daly, and Miss Hughes. See, said Akimi, I was right the first time we came in here. I said dandy, and everybody else said, no, candy, Willy Wonka. Yes, it's all coming back to me, said Mr. Limoncello. 1968, I was pondering an idea for a game at the old public library. And, said Kyle, you were so totally focused, you didn't hear the police sirens screaming past the library as they raced to the gold leaf bank. The blackbird was from Alexandriaville, said Sierra. The police siren royal was from that day. Miguel finished that thought. When the dandy bandits tried to crawl into the bank. My goodness, said Limoncello. You kids, how could you kids know all that? From the game clues, said Kyle. And from the story Doc Dr. Zinchenko told us on Friday night when somebody asked her why the library needed a bank vault door. She was already feeding us clues, said Akimi. The time is now 11 a.m., announced the ceiling lady. The game will end in one hour. Come on, said Kyle, heading to for the door. It's the 11th hour. We need to go check out the Wonder Dome again. They raced to the balcony. There it is, said Sierra. 364.1092, shouted Miguel. Woohoo, cried Akimi. We're gonna win. Chapter 54. On the first floor, Charles was at long last video chatting with his uncle, James Willoughby III, the Librarian of Congress, who had finally shown up for the Ask an Expert call. Sorry for the delay, Charles. That's okay, Uncle Jimmy, said Charles, straining to smile and not scream. The time is now 11 a.m., announced the annoyingly placid lady in the ceiling. The game will end in one hour. Charles had to hustle. Sir, I know you are a very important, very busy man, so I just have one quick question. If I were a book on true crimes in the state of Ohio, where would you shelve me? Library of Congress classification? No, sir. Do we decimal? Ah, uh, easy. 364.1. What comes after the one will depend, of course, on how many books a library. Charles didn't stick around to hear the rest of his uncle's answer. He took off running for the closest spiral staircase up to the second floor. As he ascended the steps two at a time, he saw Kyle Keeley and his entire entourage running down a staircase from the third floor. Charles reached the second floor balcony first. He darted around the bend, past the door, to the 500s room, the 400s. Keeley and his crew were coming from the opposite direction, but Charles reached the door to the 300s room before them. He swiped his library card, yanked on the handle, and dashed into the room. He scanned the shelves and headed to his right. He heard Keeley enter the room. Glancing over his shoulder, Charles, Charles saw Keeley go left. Charles dashed up an aisle between bookcases. He read the number at the end of each, each row of shelves. 310, 320, 330. One of these robot, those robots with the book baskets came rumbling across his path, but Charles was able to dodge it. 340, 350. Keeley's footsteps pounded up the passageway on the other side of the shelving units to his left. 
In the middle of the 300s room, they entered an open space with a judge's bench and witness box. Charles was getting closer to the true crime section, but so was Kyle. Charles saw Keeley reading something off his palm. He had the whole call number. It was time to change tactics. Charles hung back and let Keeley take the lead. He, Kyle rushed toward a bookcase. Charles sprinted after him. Got it, shouted. Kyle shouted as he reached for a book on the shelf. But before he could completely pull it out, Charles grabbed hold of the book, too. They both yanked it off the shelf. Kyle had the spine. Charles had hold of the top. They tugged it back and forth. While they wrestled with the book, Keeley's teammates caught up with him. Careful, Kyle, said Sierra Russell. Don't hurt the book. Charles grinned. Keeley, the sentimental sap, was listening to the silly, bookish girl and easing up on his grip. Giving Charles his chance. He body-checked Keeley, slammed him in, into him with his shoulder, sent him flying, and the book tumbling. Charles snatched it off the floor. He had the book. He quickly flipped through the table of contents, saw chapter 11 about a robbery at the Gold Leaf Bank in Alexandriaville. He knew he'd won the game. Charles used his free hand to slap an L on his forehead. Loser, he sneered at Keeley. A tiger roar, roared. A whistle blew, and Mr. Limoncello entered the room, accompanied by Clarence Clement and what looked like a rare Bengal tiger. Mr. Cheltington? Charles smiled. He knew Mr. Limoncello was about to congratulate him for him for defying the odds and winning the game. He had single-handedly defeated Kyle Keeley's entire team. Yes, sir, Mr. Limoncello. Do you remember Dr. Zinchenko's number one rule? You bet, sir, no food or drink except in the Book Nook Cafe. No, said Mr. Limoncello, touching the tip of his nose and making a buzzer noise. Dr. Z, tell him what he should have said. Dr. Zinjago's voice for heard out of the ceiling's fingers. Be gentle with each other and most especially the library's books and exhibits. I know, said Charles. That's why I had to stop Kyle Keeley. He was ready to rip the cover off this poor book. Heck, sir, everybody at school knows that Kyle Keeley is a maniac. He'll do anything to win a game. Mr. Limoncello turned to Keeley. Is that true, Kyle? Would you actually destroy property if it stood between you and your prize? Well, sir, Keeley was stammering. The fool didn't know how to lie. Charles quickly opened the book to Chapter 11 and slipped his library card to bookmark the location. You should ask Keeley about the window he broke, sir. Mr. Limoncello turned to face Charles again. The window? Yes, sir. The whole school heard about it. See, Kyle Keeley and his two brothers were playing some sort of wild scavenger hunt game, and Mr. Limoncello pointed at the book. That's clever. You use your library card as a bookmark. Yes, sir, I do, said Charles, turning on the charm. Of course, I can't take full credit for such a clever idea. On Friday night, I saw Sierra Russell doing it. You told Andrew Peckelman to borrow her card. Charles blinked several times. I, I beg your pardon? You broke Dr. Zinchenko's number one rule. You were not gentle with your teammate, Andrew. In fact, you bullied him into stealing Miss Russell's library card, which you knew she always used as a bookmark. No, sir, I didn't. Yes, Charles, you did. <coughs> Mr. Limoncello touched his right ear. In fact, Dr. Zinchenko has spent the la past few hours combing through security tapes, and guess what she just found? Charles heard his own voice ringing out of the ceiling speakers. Have you noticed what Sierra Russell uses for a bookmark? No, that was Andrew, said Mr. Limoncello. This is you again. Her library card, which, of course, doubles as a key for meeting room B. Find a way to borrow it. You stole, you told Andrew to steal Sierra's library card. How could you record that, said Charles. I was whispering. And I have very good microphones. You're done, Charles. Dr. Zinchenko, tell our departing guest what he just won. Absolutely nothing, said the voice of the Russian librarian. Please, but please, Mr. L, tell Charles the correct answer to the final pictogram. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Lemoncello reached into his back pocket and pulled out a 4 by 4 card and showed it to Charles. Okay. Charles stood there fuming. Anyone care to help Charles out? Hmm, said Kyle. Is it six eat? You are very close, said Mr. Limoncello. 
There was a pause, and then Haley laughed. Did it come after the football player? Yeah, said Charles. So? Andrew was right all along, said Haley. The football player clue wasn't passed. It was 19. Mr. Limoncello shifted into his game show voice. So, Haley Daly, would you, like, care to solve the puzzle? Sure. You can walk out the way the bandits crawled in in 1968. I don't get it, said Charles. 1968, said Akimi. You know, 1968. Ah, uh, yes, said Mr. Limoncello. From the year, the year from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, won the Newbery Medal for Excellence in Children's Literature. Another clue you completely missed, Charles. Wow, said Miguel, and I thought Chiltingtons never lose. There's a first time for everything, said Mr. Limoncello. Clarence Clement kindly escort young Mr. Chiltington from the building. Bye-bye, said Akimi. There goes this game's biggest loser. Chapter 55. Open it, Akimi said to Kyle. We only have like 40 minutes to figure out how Lop Lolly and the Dandy Bandits crawled into the bank back in six, 1968. Kyle flipped through the True Crime Ohio to the place where Charles had slipped in his bookmark. Well, said Miguel. Chapter 11. The Dandy Bandits burrow into a bank vault. Even though thou shall not steal, said Akimi. And I bet they crawled in, right, said Haley. The clever, clever thieves, Kyle read from the book, took up residence in an abandoned dress factory next to the Gold Leaf Bank and spent weeks tunneling from its basement into the bank vault. Which, said Miguel, according to these old blueprints I found, was down where the book sorting machine is now. That explains the first clue, said Kyle. The book title was Get to Know Your Local Library. Dr. Zinchenko meant we needed to, to get to know this library. This also explains why she wanted us to read those Sherlock Holmes stories. The Adventure of the Red-Headed League, said Sierra. The story about robbers tunneling into a bank from a building next door. Kyle nodded. Dr. Zinchenko told me she had just reread it. I'll bet that's where she got the idea for this whole game. Hey, Charles should have stuck with crawling through sewers like he did in that video game, joked Miguel. He might have found the Dandy Bandits tunnel before we did. Come on, you guys, said Haley. We need to be back in the basement. I'm coming with you, said Mr. Limoncello. I just have to see how the story ends. Clutching the true story, true crime book against his chest, Kyle led the way down to the stacks. Why, you, why are you bringing that book, asked Akimi. We'll put it on the conveyor belt thing, Kyle explained. Whatever basket the scanner sends it to, I'm guessing that's where we'll find our black square. Our shortcut out of the library. Exactly. As the team trooped down the steps to the basement, Mr. Lemoncello turned to Kyle and said, So, Mr. Keeley, did you have fun this weekend? Yeah. Good. Congratulations, Miss Hughes. It seems you have already won. Akimi sort of blushed. What do you mean? asked Kyle. In her essay, your extremely good friend wrote, and I quote, I want to see the new library so I can tell my friend Kyle Keeley how cool it is. You wrote your essay about me? Maybe, mumbled Akimi. Wow, said Kyle. No, but no one's ever done that before. Well, no one's ever going to do it again if you blow our chance of winning this thing, so can we please stop yakking and find our way out of here? Works for me. Warning, said the calm voice in the ceiling speakers. This game will terminate in 30 minutes. Everyone moved a little faster. Fortunately, when the group reached the basement, the floor-to-ceiling bookshelves didn't start sliding into another maze formation. The automatic book sorter is straight up this path near the far wall, said Kyle. They made it to the conveyor belt. From what I remember from the old blueprints, said Miguel, the vault was right here in the same spot as the machine. Okay, you guys, said Kyle. What, whatever robo basket this book ends up in is probably sitting right on top of the entrance to the tunnel. Here goes everything. Kyle placed True Crime Ohio into the array of crisscrossing beams. Nothing happened. What's going on, cried Miguel. Why isn't it working? Maybe this book isn't heavy enough. Kyle pushed down on the cover of the book of it. It still naughty. They stared, dumbfounded, at the book sitting on the immobile belt. It wouldn't stop moving yesterday, muttered Haley. That's it, cried Akini. She hurried to the wall and flipped on flipped the emergency shutoff back to the on position. 
Several red laser scanners bring to life under the book drop slot. The belt started moving slowly. <coughs> the single book, book worked its way down the line like a candy bar on a wrapping machine. When it reached the third robo basket from the end, a set of rollers popped up and shunted the book off to the side into the waiting wire basket. The conveyor belt stopped rolling. The robo cart rolled away. Nothing else happened. That's it. Warning, said the calm voice. This game will terminate in 20 minutes. It didn't work, said Haley. We're toast, added Akimi. Wait, said Kyle, pointing to a square tile on the floor where the robo basket had been. It was glowing like one of the touchscreen computers in the desk up upstairs. It says, Howdy, do you like fun and games? Get ready. Excellent, Akimi giggled. Then she heard she and Kyle cracked up, remembering the box tops from their first puzzle in the board room on Saturday morning. Now it says we're going to get an anagram, said Kyle. My favorite kind of cookie, said Mr. Limoncello. Okay, everybody, said Kyle. Gather round. Get ready. Kyle, Akimi, Sierra, Miguel, and Haley knelt on the floor in a circle around the square. Mr. Limoncello hovered behind him. Here we go, said Kyle, as the game instructions scrolled across the screen. Give me 16 words made from 16 letters in 60 seconds or less. A 60-second clock popped up at the bottom of the screen, and then a 4x4 four four boggle jumble of letters. Okay, so there's the uh, letters there, and they had to come up with 16 words using those letters. <clears throat> Luigi L. Limoncello, mumbled Kyle. The 60-second clock started ticking down. Sierra shouted out, Lemon! And a ding sounded from the speaker above. The five teammates started shouting words. Cello, Eon, Elm, Lion, Mole, Leg, Oil. Thirty seconds left, said Mr. Limcello. One, Cell, Cone, Lone, Glen, Lime, uh, Mole. We already said that. Melon. That's fifteen, said the voice in the ceiling. Um, ten seconds left. Anybody. Five, four, Colonel, shouted Haley. The computer screen flashed congratulations and winners. <clears throat> Somewhere, a game show audience cheered. Fireworks rockets, fireworks rockets whistled through the air, and several geese honked out a hooray. Please stand back, said the soothing voice in the ceiling. Kyle and his teammates did as they were told. Warning, the voice continued. This game will terminate in 15 minutes. We still need to get out, you guys, said Akimi. Hurry, floor, do something. The eight tiles surrounding the glowing tablet also started to glow, first yellow, then orange, then purple. Our secret square, said Akimi. There was a series of clicks, and the tiles began folding up on themselves and retracting into the floor, opening up like an origami trap door. Look, said Haley, their steps. Mr. Limoncello peered down into the hole at the well-lit staircase and tunnel. My, my, Dr. Zinchenko has certainly cleaned things up since Mr. Lopoly was here. Of course she did, said Haley, so we can walk out the way the bandits crawled in in 1968. Hurry, everybody, said Mr. Limoncello. I don't want to be late to my own birthday party. Okay, chapter 56. Kyle led the way up the tunnel and brought his team, plus Mr. Limoncello, into an empty basement filled with mannequins and cardboard boxes. This must be the cellar of one of the clothing shops in Old Town, said Kyle. The fitting factory, said Haley, reading a tag on a shipping crate. It's one of my faves. And, said Sierra, back in 1968, it was the real dress factory that Leopold Bob Lally and the Dandy Bandits used. There's some steps over here, said Miguel, climbing a wooden staircase. And a door. He jiggled the knob. Oh, man, it's locked. Kyle looked up at the dingy casement windows, about ten feet above the cellar door. <coughs> he couldn't help but grin grinning. It reminded him of another game he had once won. This time he just didn't he didn't he just have to reverse things a little. Help me drag over a couple cartons, Kyle said to Miguel. We can stack them up on top of each other underneath this window. After they built a stair a step unit out of boxes, Kyle climbed up and examined the window latch. Great, he said. Don't tell me, said Akimi, another game. Yep, it's a lock. There's a combination lock, the kind with four wheels and random letters. Warning, said the voice. What, said Akimi? Dr. Zinchenko put loudspeakers in the basement, too. This game will terminate in four minutes. 
<coughs> Yo, open the lock, Kyle said Miguel. Hang on, it's some kind of board game. Is there a clue, asked Kaylee. Haley? Of course. Kyle read the tiny slip of paper taped to the glass. Once you learn how to do this, you will be forever free. Everyone started laughing. The last puzzle was ridiculously easy. Ready, children, said Mr. Limoncello, all together now. And they all shouted it at the same time. Read. Kyle thumbed the wheels to spell out to spell R-E-A-D. The lock clicked, the window opened, and this time he didn't need to shatter any glass to win the game. Kyle and Mr. Limoncello stood on top of the highest box and helped the others up and out of the basement. When Haley crawled through the window frame, someone in the crowd that had gathered around the library for the game's big finale saw her and started screaming, look, it's Haley Daly. She's, she's the first one out. She won with just two minutes to go. Nuh-uh, Kyle heard Haley shout in her particular voice. I'm just one member of a super amazing team. We're all winners. Woohoo! When Mikimi climbed through the window, the crowd chanted her name. How do people know my name? Kyle heard her say. Dad, did you tell them? Sierra Russell was set to crawl out next. Mr. Limoncello? Yes, Sierra? What time does the library open tomorrow? For you, Sierra, 9 a.m. Smiling, she stepped into the hands and climbed out of the window. Kyle felt bad when Sierra stood up on the sidewalk. Who was out there to cheer for her? But then she heard Haley shout, Hey, you guys, you got to meet our amazing new friend, Sierra Russell. She's so smart, she could tell you who wrote the phone book. <coughs> the crowd went crazy. Sierra, Sierra, Sierra. Okay, said Kyle, you're next, Miguel. And Miguel, said Mr. Limoncello, if your summer schedule permits it, I'd love you to head up my team of Limoncello Library aides. Thank you, sir. It'd be an honor. And please invite Mr. Peckelman to join you. But Andrew thinks your library is stupid. All the more reason for him to spend time getting to know us a little better. Now off you go. They gave Miguel a boost up and out the window. The chanting outside grew even louder. Miguel! 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 You guys! Miguel shouted. This library is like a good book. You've just got to check it out. The crowd laughed. Kyle groaned. You're next, Mr. Keeley, said Mr. Limoncello. Okay, can I ask one last question? Certainly, and I hope it won't be the last. Are you really going to put us all in your television commercial commercials? Oh, yes. You'll be quite famous. Cool. Indeed. Who knew spending time in your local library could be such a rewarding experience? Kyle smiled. You did, Mr. Limoncello, and now you do, too. Kyle put his foot in Mr. Limoncello's hands and grabbed hold of the window frame. See you at the birthday party, sir. Oh, yes. And you know what, Kyle? What? There might be balloons. All right. I hope you enjoyed the book. And remember, there's lots of um, other books in this series you can check out next year or maybe this summer. Have a good summer.